Welcome back. Now, uh, let's continue our discussion about optimal allocation of labor between the two sectors, cloth and food. Uh, in the previous videos, we already said that, you know, to be able to find the optimal allocation, uh, we need this uh, four quadrant uh, diagram, okay? And in the first quadrant here, the upper right one, uh, we find, you know, uh, the PPF, the blue curve here, um, and also, you know, with the indifference curves, we can find the one and the only one, uh, which is tangent to the PPF, and that tangent point would give us the optimal um, combination between uh, food and cloth. Okay, and based upon that optimal combination of the two products, then we can go uh, to the third quadrant and find how uh, the economy should allocate its labor uh, between the two sectors. Okay, well, um, this way, you know, it looks pretty elegant, right? It looks, you know, everything looks pretty um, accurate. Uh, however, we got to remember that to be able to figure this out, we have to have the indifference curves, right? And um, I believe in the previous uh, video, we briefly mentioned that the indifference curves in reality is actually pretty hard to find, okay? You probably need to do a lot of surveys um, uh, for the customers, okay, to figure out their indifference curves. Okay. And sometimes you may even find, you know, among these surveys, the results could be contradictory. Okay, so here, uh, because of that difficulty, we would consider an alternative way, um, you know, to figure out how to allocate labor uh, between the two sectors. Okay, especially when uh, or where um, we cannot find the indifference curve. Okay. Now here we're going to rely upon the supply and demand on the labor market, uh, something we are quite familiar with okay, since the introductory um, course. Okay. Um, so labor supply here, uh, we said that you know this uh, in this economy the total amount of labor is L, which is given, right? And the amount of labor hired by the cloth sector will be LC, and LF is the amount of labor hired by the food industry. Okay, so uh, this will be our economy-wide labor uh, supply. Okay, labor demand is going to be um, it requires more work. Okay, it's going to be more interesting. Now here, let's start with the profit maximizing behaviors. Uh, of the cloth factories, okay, how these factories could maximize their profit, okay, and uh, of course, um, they can achieve the highest amount of profit by adjusting their labor input, okay. Now, first of all, we need to look at the prof uh, the margin of benefit. Okay, and, and later we're going to talk about the marginal cost. In other words, this is a very typical, you know, cost-benefit analysis. Okay, and remember in economics, when we talk about the cost and the benefit, we always do that on the margin. Okay, so we always look at the, the marginal benefit versus marginal cost. Now, to produce each piece of cloth, the marginal benefit would be MPLC, that's a marginal product of labor in cloth times PC, the price of cloth. Why is that? Because the MPLC tells us by adding one more unit of labor into production, how much output that unit of labor can produce. Okay, let me say this one more time. When we add one more unit of labor in production, how many units of output here cloth that unit of labor can produce? 
Okay, so basically, this is how much more it can um, produce okay, or contribute to um, our cloth production. And uh, suppose you know this uh, cloth factory um, put this on the market, and um, each unit can be sold at PC, right? That's the price of cloth. So this product tells us the revenue uh, the firm can make by adding or hiring the last unit of labor. Okay, again, unit of output times the unit price. Okay, so this is how much money, loosely speaking, how much money the firm can make okay, by hiring one more unit of labor. Okay. Marginal cost would be more straightforward. So that's the wage, okay? Because by hiring the workers, you have to pay them, right? By hour here. So this is hourly wage, WC, okay? In cloth industry. Now, how could they maximize their profit? They compare these two, MB with MC, okay? And if the M M marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. That means by hiring this unit, the last unit of labor, uh, the firm actually make more money than what it has to pay to the, the labor, right? That means this is pretty good, right? It's a good deal for the firm. So the firm will continue hiring. Okay, they will hire next unit of labor and compare this over again. Okay, marginal benefit versus marginal cost. On the opposite, if the money the uh, cloth factory can earn from the market is less than the wage it pays to the worker, okay, the last unit of uh, labor, then the firm should lay off workers okay they should lay off workers now once they start laying off workers we're gonna see fewer workers remaining uh, remained in the cloth industry right and then the marginal product of labor would go up this is because of a law of diminishing returns when we have a few units of labor in production, then each unit of labor becomes more productive. Okay. So um, again, the the layoff workers in um, th that makes you know the marginal benefit becomes larger. Okay, and uh, eventually here uh, the profit can be maximized when the two sides are just equal okay as we said you know when they start laying off the mpc will go up so the product will be higher till the moment when these two are equal okay back here it's the same thing when they hire more and more labor um, the mplc will go down okay again the more you put into uh, the production uh, holding other inputs constant then the marginal product of labor will uh, will go down, right? So the product will go down until the two sides are equal. Okay. So this is uh, the profit maximizing um, condition, you could say. Okay. Once we solve for these, the cloth factories could achieve their profit, uh, their maximum, their maximum uh, profit. Okay. And the same thing happens um, in the food industry. Okay? When these the marginal benefit equals marginal cost, which is a wage here paid, so um, the food industry can maximize its profit. Okay. Now here I would like to challenge you guys one more um, time about this dependent uh, and uh, and independent variables. Okay. So here, look at these two equations. Which one is dependent variable? Which one is independent variable? And which one is constant? 
Okay, think about this, and uh, we're gonna talk about talk about it in uh, class. Okay. Now here, I would like to give you guys a, a numerical example, and I hope this example could you know uh, help you figure out these questions about dependent independent variables and constant. Okay. Now suppose MPC marginal product of labor in cloth equals 8 minus LC. Once again, here MPLC is measured by output, right? The unit of cloth. And um, LC is just a unit of labor used okay, in cloth factories. And the price of cloth is given $2 each. Okay. Now here, based upon the equation we already derived, so we said uh, WC wage in cloth uh, industry equals this, the product of MPLC and PC. Now we just plug this in, right? The MPLC equals A minus LC times 2, which is the price of cloth. And so we open the um, parenthesis and we got 16 minus 2LC, which equals WC. Okay, all right, again, from here, you might um, get some ideas about, um, you know, uh, these questions we raised above, okay? Now, here we're going to say that uh, what's in front of us is actually the labor demand function in cloth, okay? Oh, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, this is because... Here, uh, again, the left-hand side is a wage, which simply means the um, price of labor. And on the right-hand side, what we find is a quantity of labor. Okay? And this equation shows us the relationship between the quantity of labor and the price of labor. By definition, that is demand, right? For example, the demand function we used in the intro and the intermediate um, microeconomics, uh, we gave you the price of smartphone, uh, and you can figure out the quantity, right? S quantity of smartphone supplied, okay? And so here it's the same thing. Uh, this equation shows the relationship between the price of labor and the quantity of labor. Now, we know this is a demand function because we see this minus sign here, which shows there's a, a reverse relationship or there's a, um, a, a negative correlation okay, between the quantity and the price. Okay? So that means the, this curve, if we put on the graph, it's going to be downward sloping. All right? So here, as you can see, this is... Uh, um, how we can put um, the, the, the equation on the graph, okay? Here, the horizontal axis is the quantity of labor, and the vertical axis is the marginal product of labor. Again, this guy is measured by units of output, okay? How much, you know, additional output produced by um, the last unit of labor. And we know MPLC slopes downward because of law of diminishing returns, okay? Now here, um, only a little trick we're going to do is uh, because if we go back to the previous uh, slide, we find that, you know, on the left-hand side of the equation, it's MPLC times PC, right? So on the graph, this is what we're going to do. We just, you know, multiplied uh, by PC, so we're, we find that, you know, because the price is given, so this is actually just a number, right? So when we multiply that a number by the MPLC, we are basically shifting the MPLC curve to the right, okay? And so we have this red one, that's the uh, our labor demand curve. Um, again, why? Why we believe this red one is the demand curve? Uh, think about this and um, bring your thoughts to class. Okay.